Hello everybody, my name's Owen Gunnell and I'm here today uh, to talk a little bit about percussion, obviously, because that's what I do, but also to give you a few little tips to help you improve quickly and also, um, this is maybe the main thing, talk to you about where you can go with music. Now, why do we play music? Uh, you know, it makes life better in general, but some of us um, maybe want to take it further and want to become musicians. So how do we do that? We don't just wake up in the morning. I didn't just wake up today and say, oh, today I'm going to be a musician. Um, obviously it takes a lot of practice, a lot of hard work, like anything. You want to be good at anything. You've got to work hard, haven't you? But also it helps if you, I don't know, you go to places where perhaps you might get the best opportunities in music and also see other people like you who are really good, you can get better off them, as well as uh, learn of some of, I don't know, this could be an opinion as well, uh, some of the best teachers out there. So I'm talking about going to music colleges or going to university, whatever. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. But before we do that, we should play a little bit. Now, um, ah, it's a shame I'm not up there in Northumberland with you, but I'm going to imagine I'm there. It's cold down here where I am in Cambridgeshire. So first up, uh, this is my store, my instrument store, where I have all my instruments. Um, and you might think, oh, God, it's all right for some, isn't it, with all these instruments. Now, I can tell you, 25 years ago, um, even longer perhaps, I won't, let, won't tell you that, um, I, when I was thinking about, oh, maybe I will um, try and get into a music college. I do want to be a percussionist. That'd be a really cool job. Um, what did I have then? I didn't have any of this stuff. I had one xylophone, which I bought out of my paper money, I had a paper round, um, and uh, a thunder snare drum, which was a make back then, um, cheap snare drum that I had, uh, which I also bought my paper money. So I had a snare drum and a xylophone, and that's where I started out. After even having lessons for a, a couple of years, I used to try and, where I was having lessons, go a bit early um, at school and practice on those instruments um, to give myself a better chance to get better. So. That's my little background story of how I got to where I am today from 20 odd years ago. Now I'm really lucky, apart from at the moment because of the coronavirus, um, I go all over the world playing concerts um, and recording for films that you might have watched and adverts, etc, etc. Um, and I think anybody can get to music college and have a go at becoming a musician. You don't have to have all this stuff when you're 15 and spend millions of pounds. Anybody can do it. So today I'm going to show you a little things, a couple of little things to help you uh, and maybe make you think I can do this. And then also maybe a couple of little, little bits of advice as to where to look to find out more about it. If you are sort of 17 or maybe even younger, 17, 18, maybe a bit younger and thinking, oh, I really I can get into university or oh, maybe I I actually prefer playing than doing more academic work, so maybe I should think about one of the music colleges because uh, I also teach at three of the music colleges in the UK. Um, there's not many, there's a few. They're all brilliant, not just the ones I'm involved at. Um, but I'm going to give you some advice on how to maybe think about, first of all, auditioning. Anyone can audition. Um, and then secondly, how to get in, okay? So before we do all that, it's a pretty deep start that, isn't it? Um, let's do a bit of playing. So wherever you're sitting now or standing, um, if you've got some sticks, hopefully you've got some sticks, if you're a drummer or a percussionist. If you haven't yet, um, use your hands <laughs> if you're starting out. Uh, but if you're a percussionist or a drummer, get your sticks, go and get them. And also, if you've got a practice pad, get a practice pad. Now, if you haven't got a practice pad, that doesn't matter. I used to use something called the Yellow Pages. Um, ask your folks uh, or your grandparents what that is. Um, but if you have got a book, a notebook, you can use that as a practice pad. Um, you can use a pillowcase, just chuck it on the floor. You can play on the carpet. If you've got a wooden floor and it's a bit loud, um, chuck a little sheet over it, just something uh, to make it feel a little bit like a drum, okay? So I'm gonna do a little bit playing and I'm gonna shout and answer you some questions. Now, the reason for doing this is I don't want you to just sit there and listen to me waffling away for the next however long I'm gonna talk for. I wanna do a bit of playing as well, and I want you to leave thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna think about that a bit differently. I think that might make me a bit better. Oh, and do you know what? I think I am gonna try and get into one of the music colleges. And um, so, that's the aim for today. Now, 
Uh, have you got your sticks? Have you got your practice pad or something that looks like a practice pad? Okay, so um, I'd like us to play some single strokes. Um, and while we're playing our single strokes, uh, just have a look at everything that's going on. So if you're sitting down, that's great. Maybe if you're like sitting on the sofa, you probably wouldn't ever play, there's a couple of pieces you would, but play sitting down on the sofa back like this. Like, so try and sit how you would if you were doing a gig, if you were doing a gig. So if you've got a, a chair, sit on a chair, that's cool. If you want to stand up and play, that's cool, okay? So um, let's just do a little bit of playing before I talk a little bit more about all those things. So let's play some single strokes. That's just right now. So after four, let's all do that. So we're playing quavers. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Here we go. Ready? After four. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Stop. Excellent. Now, same rhythm this time, but double. So right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. After four. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. And now why don't we just do all one hand. We're gonna go, same with the one, two, three, four. And switch to the other hand after four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and stop. Okay, so now just warmed up our hands a little bit. Let's give a little quick shake. That's it, give me a quick shake, nice. Now, pop your sticks down, like this. What we wanna do now, is we're gonna become professional from this day forth. And by that I mean, we're gonna be professional, we're gonna act professional, okay? I might sound a bit serious, but um, if you've ever watched, this is maybe a little bit more for anyone who's middle-aged and tuned in. Uh, some people have started playing drums in the last year or so who are a lot older, which is fantastic. So, um, this is maybe a bit more, eh, they might know a bit more about this. So, do any of you know the game of golf? Yeah, some good golf courses up in Northumberland, I think. I've driven past a few. Um, if you watch the best golf players in the world, the best golf players in the world, when they get their club out and they hit the ball, they don't just whip out the band and go, pull it like that, do they? And they're the best in the world. They're the best in the world. They get their club out, and they take their time. They have what we call a routine, a real routine. So everything, and they're the best in the world. They've hit millions of goal balls, but they have a routine. So every time they go to play a shot, whether they're practicing or whether they're doing it in front of 20 million people in the US Open or whatever, um, they do it the same, they have a routine. So it's really good for us to have a little routine when we play because we're performing. Uh, just like those golfers, we're performing. So when we get to a concert, if you get a bit nervous, ooh, and you start panicking, if you haven't got a routine, you'll do the wrong things and then you won't play as well. So it's nice to have a little routine. So uh, my little routine, it's not necessarily the right one, but the one I have is I get my sticks, I check that I'm feeling really comfortable, like all my weight, I'm not sort of slouching, or like sitting back, and I'll talk about it on the Zylo in a minute. Uh, but I'm nice and comfortable, and I look at my hands, I have a little look, I'm holding the sticks, we can all hold the sticks differently, but ideally, unless you play match, uh, trad rather, uh, you want them to match up, you want them to be the same. Okay, so have a little look at my hands, check they're the same, have a little bounce like that, check I've got the right amount of stick there, there we go, I have a little bounce, and then I decide whether or not I'm gonna start the thing I'm about to play with my sticks on the head or off the head. Okay, so I always decide that, always decide that. So if you're doing an exam or an audition or anything like that, for every piece, decide that. And if you're gonna put your sticks down on the head, um, it's best not to go, like that, because it sounds like the piece has started that you're about to play. So uh, just work out exactly what you're gonna do before you play a note, and feel the tempo before you're gonna play as well. You can do it in your heel, in your toes, or in your head. Just really count, it's really important to count, isn't it? So there's my little routine. So see if you can have a little routine now when you get your sticks out from now on. You know, have a little routine. Don't just get the sticks out, and every time you play, your one leg's out here. Um, the drums are different height. Uh, you don't know whether you're standing or sitting down. You can mix it up a bit. You can routine for each way. Um, but it's nice to have a little sort of set thing going, okay? Because that will help you out when you get a little bit nervous. And if you want to do auditions, 
for music college, you might get nervous. I've seen a lot of people nervous when I've sat there on the panels and I've watched hundreds, okay? So, and we all get nervous, I get nervous, okay? So, um, next up, let's get our brains in gear. So before we play a gig or an audition, we'd like to warm up, wouldn't we? We'd warm up, uh, yeah, we'd play some doubles. We'd do a few rudiments, we'd warm up, get our hands are nice and warm, that's exactly right. But we also wanna warm up our brains a little bit. We wanna be, we wanna be really thinking, okay, this is it, I've got 20 minutes, um, or however long my piece is that I've got to perform in a gig or my audition. I've really got to concentrate, so I really get your head in gear. So let's just check our brains are switched on today. So um, do we all know what a paradiddle is? If we don't, really quickly, I don't want to be patronising, but really quickly, right, left, right, right, left. Yeah, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. If you don't know it, pause it, practice it, turn me back on in a minute, okay? So paradiddle, so let's all play a paradiddle after four, and then I'm gonna shout some questions at you. And it's a shame I'm not there, because I always like to hear people's answers. I'm gonna shout some questions at you, and you can't stop doing your paradiddle. You've gotta keep going. So therefore, our hands are going, but we're using our brains, we're concentrating on this, but we're also concentrating on asking, answering, rather, the ridiculous questions I'm going to be asking you, okay? So don't stop playing the paradiddle until I say stop, but make sure you keep answering the questions I'm going to shout out at you. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me. I'll try and play my paradiddle quietly on my notebook. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Yeah, excellent. So here's the first questions. Shout it nice and loud. Here we go. Shout your full name. Day of birth. Nice. Postcode. Nice. There we go. A bit weirder now. Favourite meal. Yeah. Keep going with your paradiddle. Least favourite meal. Yeah. Favourite place you've ever been in the whole world. Go. some of these answers. Place you'd most like to go in the world. Yeah, this is kind of weird just shouting this on my own in my practice studio. Okay, uh, favourite piece of music, go. Favourite film? What's that? I don't know, I'm not sure. Favourite percussion instrument? If you could have any job in the world when you're older, what would it be? Okay. Uh, any more? Uh, what would you buy first if you won the lottery? That's a weird question. Okay. Are we going to stop in a minute? Here we go. One, two, three, four, and stop. Okay, so. Did you manage to keep the paradiddle going and answer all the questions? If you didn't, there's something for you to practice. So we're doing this without thinking almost down here, but we're using our brain to answer the questions, the ridiculous questions. Um, so we're doing more than one thing. We're warming our brain up, warming our brain up as well as our hands. So something we want to think about when we're doing gigs or if you can audition to go to a music college or be in a youth orchestra or something like that. Um, you have to audition for a lot of these things to get in because other people want to be in it as well. So um, there's a few little things maybe that could help out there. So think about routine um, and then also um, how we sit, how we stand, how we sort of present ourselves on the instrument, um, warming up uh, and then warming our brains up as well as our hands are so cold at the moment, isn't it? Um, so there's a few little tips that might help. Now, the next one is uh, metronome. See if you can get a metronome. Now these days, um, you get metronomes on phones, and you could say I haven't got a phone, so I can't have a metronome. That's that's cool. You can get second-hand metronomes, really cheap. Uh, I got one, I got a metronome. This makes me sound really sad. Um, I got a metronome. It was either for my 16th or 18th birthday. That's the present I got, a metronome. That's what I wanted. Like a pyramid metronome, one of the old school ones that goes It's a brilliant present. Um, so, <laughs> maybe not. Um, Metronome is really important for us because we want to really 
as percussionists, as musicians really, but especially percussionists, we would be able to make sure we play in time. So get your metronome on, uh, play different rhythms, just going from quavers, triplets, semi-quavers, quintuplets, sextuplets, uh, the whole lot. Go through all of them, just play along to your metronome because obviously it's really important to have good time, good internal pulse, as well as being able to play fast, do all the rudiments and things like that. So I'm gonna give you a few things which I think you should, uh, if you are thinking of taking music seriously, you know, going and studying it, uh, that you could download, which could help you out. You might know them anyway, but it's nice to come from someone else as well, if I say it, as well as your teacher does. So I'll give you a few of those later on. Um, if I forget, I can email you. I'll give my email address later. So uh, anyway, there's a bit of the snare drum. Hopefully that's sort of, you know, I don't know, sort of um, giving us a few things to think about there. Um, because really, have a little think about what we're doing here. We're just hitting something, aren't we? A few rudiments, I mean, rolls. We've got to get our rolls good, that's pretty hard. You've got to practice slow to fast with your doubles, all the things I'm sure that your teachers say. There's not that much, is there? But, you know, it can be tricky, can't it? We can sound pretty bad on the snare drum pretty easily, okay? So, um, snare drum, I'm gonna move away from that now, and I'm gonna pull this instrument over here, so this is a xylophone, and um, again, uh, you know, not all of us uh, would be lucky enough to have a xylophone. Like I said, I mentioned it earlier, I've been around a while, so I've got a lot of instruments. I'm 40 years old, so I've got a lot of instruments. But uh, before I was going to audition to go to music college, or when I started getting into percussion, I was like, yeah, I've got to get a xylophone. So me and my brother, who's also a percussionist, um, which is handy. Uh, we bought a xylophone, um, not as good as this one, but just a xylophone, similar size notes, um, and that's essentially what I learned to play on to get into music college, so um, a xylophone. So if you haven't got a xylophone, now I know for a fact there are xylophones in Northumberland, in Newcastle, and if you wanna, you know, if you wanna have a go enough, like if you really wanna get better at it, then you'll find a way to, oh, can I come in? Do you mind if I come and practice on that xylophone or can I borrow that xylophone or can I get, you know, find ways, ask people, you know, if they've got one or where you have lessons, has got one, can I come a bit early, can I come on that day? Try and make it work in order for you to be able to have a go at it. Because I have to say, if you wanna do a percussion uh, degree at music college, it's different at universities, but at music college, uh, you have to learn a snare drum piece, a tuned piece, and a timp piece. So we'll get onto the timps later. That's the most sort of um, controversial thing to practice. So the xylophone, find a way to practice. Then also as well, um, you can get xylophones now cheaper second hand than you used to be able to actually. There's more out there. So uh, what can I say about this? Um, just on a little uh, video like this, it will help us improve. Same thing as the snare drum, first of all. Same thing, think how we stand at the instrument. Get the height of the thing right for a start. Uh, think how we stand at the instrument. Um, you know, uh, where are our feet? How we bounce, we lean forward, we lean back. How far away are we for the notes? How far away? Some people are really a bit close in, so have a little thing and it should feel comfortable, yeah? Same thing with the hands. Same thing with the hands. We should be nice and matched up. Nice and matched up. So, things we can practice to get better on the xylophone. Remember, what are we doing here? We're just... We're just hitting bits, I nearly hit my phone then. We're just hitting bits of wood, so it's target practice, target practice, yeah? Because um, we haven't got rudiments, like snare drum as such. You can still, still play rudiments on the xylophone, but it would be a bit of a weird piece if you just played a load of rudiments on an A flat or something like that. It'd be a bit weird. Within pieces, you might have them, but <clears throat> obviously it's a, more of a snare drum thing. So what can we play on the xylophone to get better straight away? So it's a couple of boring things couple of boring things which I've you know we've got to do them we've got to do them they'll help so obviously our scales and all that you know the usual yeah <clears throat> usual thing and I'm not going to say practice them for 20 hours a day just do little bits of practice now scales if you're, if you're not sure what scale is I'm not going to bore you with it now google it just google it okay <laughs> or ask maybe ask someone who might know, an old, someone a bit more senior. I'm not gonna give you a boring sort of, uh, the dictionary definition of a scale. So, um, 
scales though they help you get around the instrument and also understand key signatures for then reading music all right so um when we play our scales though um let's try and avoid this like let's from this day on forth the last thing we want to do is be afraid of making a mistake and then we end up playing like this dusting the instrument we don't want any of that we want to be hitting the instrument with percussionists we hit scrape and shake things so we want to get a nice stick height you know you might not always play like that but if you can play like this then playing like this is much easier much easier so we practice um, you can have softer sticks as well if you practice um, but I've got these out because eh, eh, it sounds like a xylophone a bit more um, so practice scales and what I like to do is once I've learned them all once I've learned them all rather um, now there's different ways you can practice them you can you know go through you go through them that's like in order circle of fifths however you want to do it chromatically you go you play then C to D to E flat yeah, you can just go up, you can do it, but what I like to do, once I learn them all, major scales, minor harmonic scales, minor melodic scales, that's what you have to do uh, to do most grade eights. I know it's all different these days. I never did grade eight, by the way. You don't have to have done grade eight to get into music college, okay? Um, remember that, remember that. If you're thinking, oh, I haven't done a grade eight, you don't have to do it, okay? Um, so, um, scales though, they're really important, like I said, to get round the instrument, and learn the key signatures. And also, we learn how to play accurately, because we really want to aim for this up and down. If we're coming side to side like this, we're gonna play more wrong notes. So we really want this up and down stroke like that, up and down, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I think it's pretty obvious, okay? So nice and up and down, and we go through our scales like that. Now, the other thing as well then, to practice the gaps, um, we can do arpeggios as well. And this is all before we've looked at any music. All before we looked at any music. And this is all available online for free. If you haven't got a computer, I think they're not open at the moment, but uh, you could, uh, in your library, I think it's, it could be free even to go on the internet on the library, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, it's all online for free. Scales, arpeggios, they're all written out, but you can work them out as well yourself pretty easily, okay? So really good thing to practice, first of all. Then I like to sort of, keep it a bit more interesting because scales that you have to do for grade eight and things like that are like I just said you know, that sort of stuff but I like to mix it up um, by doing little sort of games exercises that sounds pretty sad coming from me but to keep it interesting and keep the target and then I like to do contrary motion things Contrary motion scales, that's in different directions. So I still haven't looked at any music, by the way, but I'm getting better already on the xylophone by doing all these things. And then I'm gonna take some of the things off the snare drum. <laughs> by doing doubles, God, that was a bit cold, wasn't it? By doing doubles. Yeah, and just little things. Or I'm gonna do a little sort of xylophone penalty shootout. I'm gonna play an octave like that. One chance, little things like that, target practice to keep it interesting. Um, so practice things like that, that's kind of really useful, but do it all again. Don't do it like, oh, I'm really, thinking. really think about before you play, how you're standing, how you're looking and how you're feeling, okay? So and up and down, up and down, hit the instrument, okay? Now, next thing is then obviously, is we've got to read music, we've got to read music. Um, and again, there's loads of stuff you get online for free to just, um, read and get better at reading music. You think about, if you go back to when you were younger, learning to read, um, I've got a six year old daughter who can read now, and I think only a year ago, the two years ago, starting to read it was, you know, it's like, cat, cat, and you know, phonics, it was really slow. Then she's practiced it, she's just practiced it, she's just practiced it, and now she's reading Harry Potter. So, it's just practice, it's just practice. When people say, oh, I can't, I can't read and play the instrument, I can't read, you, you've got to just practice a bit more. You've got to practice reading music, just reading as much music as possible. If you think how much you practice reading, how much you read, and you've got better at it, think if you did that with music as well, how much better you get at reading. It's just, just like another language, it's just another language. So, uh, when I'm reading music, really important, I set the music stand in the right place. 
I'm in the right place. Depending on what I'm playing. If I'm playing all up here, the piece up here, I might put it here. Um, generally, we put it in the middle of the instrument, but that's not always. Um, I like to put it there, so I've got the notes and the music sort of roughly. Some people who might be taller than me like to put it higher up so they can see it. Um, but, you know, just find what's best for you. Find what's best for you. It's pretty kind of obvious stuff, isn't it? I think it is. I think you know that anyway. Um, so, uh, so there we have like so little sort of exercise to do without looking at the music and then reading stuff. I mean, there's just so much music out there. One of my favourite books. If you're already playing and you're know you up like grade above grade six standard, really good book just for exercises of playing is the George Hamilton Green um, Studies book. It's it's like that thick. Yeah, you might get a bit bored by it, but it's just really good for accuracy and control. It's really good, but I'll tell you them a bit later again. Um, so I think that's kind of like, we've got a few things covered there, a few sort of basic things covered there. But like I say, if you want to audition at music college, you have to learn a piece on the tune. They're all on the syllabuses there, um, on the websites for these colleges. I'll talk about them a bit. Hopefully I won't miss any out. Probably should have done a bit more research. So, um, so there's a bit on the tune. I hope that's given us a little bit to think about. Um, and then the other instrument, I haven't got them out. I've got, I've got some tucked over here and I certainly didn't used to have uh, any of these instruments, um, is the timpani. Now, if you want to go to audition at music college, you have to play a timpani piece. And I know what the first thing you're thinking is, who has timpani, who, can, who has them? Um, yeah, and that's a very, very fair answer. So um, how do you practice on timps? Uh, without having any and you never know you might even have percussion lessons and you don't have tips there and um, because that's quite common uh, so and then you're thinking well I've got to go to do an audition and I've never played on the tips that sounds like a really bad scenario so um, I know there are some tips that do exist uh, in every county in Britain there are tips in every county in Britain I'm going to throw it out there um, yeah I'm pretty sure there are uh, so, um, you've got to see if you can get there and have a little practice on them. You, you don't need to get there and practice every day. You know, you can learn the pieces away from the tips. You can do that on a lot of these instruments. So, how can you do that? Well, think about how big a tip is. If you've never seen one before, um, the heads uh, range from sort of, well, 20 inches really small. But the standard sort of sizes you'll probably play if you audition would be... Uh, this is inches, which is old measurements. If you've got an old tape measure, uh, someone older in your house says, go and find it. Uh, 32 inches, 29 inches, or 30 inches. It's kind of different manufacturers. I'm not going to bore you with it. 32 inches, 29, 26, 24, or 25, 28. So that's kind of like that big. They're like this big to that big. That's the top of them. That's the skin, okay? So that's the timpani. Now, so if you think about how big they are, uh, you could get pillows or cushions and... You can put them on the floor, just sit on the floor, and you can spread them out like that. And there you have your targets to practice the tips. So you get your music up, and you put your metronome on, and you can practice, you can play the rhythms there. And you can hear them when you hit the, the cushions or the pillows, you can hear whether or not you're playing in time. So you can practice the rhythms and learn the targets as such without even being on tips. Now you can come back and say, yeah, but what about if I have to do tuning, like pedal? pedal the tips to change the notes okay so how we practice that actually the best way to practice that is to sit behind a piano um school I, I mean does every school have a piano i'm pretty sure they do i'm pretty sure they do yeah they must do or clavin over it, like an electric one at least so um get on that piano look at the tip piece you're playing play the notes play the notes get them ready in your head then play one note one note and try and tune your notes from that one note. Okay, so you're not hearing all your notes. Say your notes are G, C, D, e, and E. Um, you're not playing on and then singing it and then singing it. You're playing a completely different note and then singing the notes that you need to tune to. So you can practice that just sitting at the piano. You don't need a full set of tips to do that. Um, so, because when you audition, uh, you're asked to tune your timpani up. Um, and uh, people have said to me before in auditions, and I, you know, it's never, if someone says this, we never go, oh, no chance. They say, well, I've never done this before. We say, okay, that's, well, we'll help you out a little bit. Um, but 
it's better if you try and have a chance trying to do it somewhere. Like I said, um, every county has got some tips somewhere in it. And I'm sure if you try hard enough, um, sending some nice emails or turning up at places and asking nicely, um, you'll be able to have a go on them. But um, some people are lucky and have got their own practice for auditions. But we bear that in mind if we're uh, sitting on a panel. But you can practice all this stuff, like I said, with cushions um, or sitting at a table, however you want to do it. Even in the air, you look a bit ridiculous, but you know, we have to do ridiculous things. Cheer and sit on the piano as well and tune things up, okay? Uh, so there are ways you can actually practice. You could learn, I've learned whole pieces. If you've ever seen, if you've ever seen me um, walking around, I'll often be, I'll often do this, which is a bit weird, isn't it? But I'll be thinking about a piece and I'll quickly, yeah, and in my head I'll have it, oh yeah, that's how that bit goes, just get the stick in, not by the instrument. So you can practice the timps away from the instrument. Okay, so um, that's kind of the three things that you need to do in order to do an audition at music college. Now, when I'm talking about music college, I um, should have probably said this at the beginning. You've tuned out already, I'd imagine that. When I'm talking about music college, um, uh, the difference between music college and university is um, both are good, but music college is more performance-based. So by that, I mean, at music college, generally, um, slightly different, they're not all like this, there is less academic work. And by that, I mean less essays. So um, put it like this, it's not quite the same, but it's pretty similar. The music college I went to, I used to do write one essay a term. That was it, one essay a term, even that was a struggle for me. Um, and it's pretty similar now, I think, uh, because you're spending your time practicing, playing, learning about the music, you know, you're learning about harmony, history of music a bit. They're slightly the more academic things, um, but it's playing predominantly. So that's why people want to go to music college because they want to play. They want to have that job where they're playing for a living, okay? So, um, which is a great job. Um, not at the moment <laughs> in the coronavirus because there's no gigs, but most of the time, it's a great job, so you have to practice. And the thing is, people see, what they see is, uh, it's a bit like acting uh, and films. A lot of people, they, they see the finished thing, they see you doing a gig, and they think, oh, I wanna do that. Or they see someone in a Hollywood film, and they go, I wanna be that actor. But they don't see the bit that's less enjoyable, which is all the practice. Because um, you have to practice to have those jobs. You have to practice. Um, actually, do you know what? Actors, maybe they don't. Acting's easier than playing music, isn't it? So um, if you want to play music, then you have to practice. There's no one in the whole world who's ever um, like become a professional musician, session musician in particular, without practicing. Now, there are some people, yeah, who've got very lucky and are in bands, who got a drum kit and just played in their band and ended up being lucky and being in a band that had a good songwriter or got a good song written for them and became famous and now they play drums and earn millions of pounds. They got lucky, they've won the lottery. But everyone else um, has to practice. You have to practice really hard in order to be able to do it. And like I said, you don't need all this kit to be able to do it and get to music college in order to pursue performing. So um, I think that kind of makes sense. So here are the colleges I'm sort of talking about. So. Um, I think we've got the difference, haven't we? We've got the difference between university and music college. One's a bit more performing, well, it's a lot more based on performing, um, and the other one, uh, the universities are a bit more academic. But you still perform at universities. Some people go to university and then do a postgrad at music college, and that's a route. But then, um, obviously, you've got more costs then with student fees these days. So, um, now, uh, let's think about the colleges in the UK um, that you might think about if you're 16, 17, 18, think, oh yeah, okay, that's it. That's what I want to audition at. I want to audition there. Um, so you've got, uh, let's go start up um, in Scotland. You've got uh, the Royal Scottish Conservatoire. It's not called that, Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. Royal Conservatoire of Scotland in Glasgow. Um, and then we're gonna come down a bit. We've got uh, the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester. And then you've got the Leeds College of Music in Leeds. I think it's called that as well. Um, and then we're going to go a bit across. We're going to go to the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. Um, and then you're just going to dip down into Wales, where you've got the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. 
And then we'll skip across to London where you've got the Royal College of Music, the Royal Academy of Music, uh, the Trinity College of Music, the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, and you've got the London College of Music as well. Now, I apologise if there's anyone watching who's like, what about the music college there, if I've missed any out? They're the ones that um, I know and the ones that uh, I teach at three of them. I teach at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama, the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire, and the Royal College of Music. Uh, I teach at those, and I went to the Royal College of Music a long time ago. Um, so I teach at those, but they're all good. And if I've missed any out that I don't know about, uh, I apologise. But get on that internet and have a little look. And then if you've got more questions, um, you can send me an email. So I'll make sure you get my email at the end, and I'll help you out, because I always want anyone to try and achieve what they want to achieve with music um, because it just makes life better like I say playing music playing more music um, I still enjoy doing it after all these years so they're the music colleges and I've said what you need to do when you audition um, you have to play a snare drum piece a tune piece and a tin piece and I've given you reasons um, and ways to get around it because we don't all own those instruments and how to get as good as possible without having millions of pounds to buy all that kit because uh, like I said I didn't have all that kit and a lot of my colleagues certainly didn't as well um, when they were auditioning and then when they were at music college. So um, I hope I've given you a few sort of things to think about there, playing wise, I've talked a lot, and then a few little insights into music college. But I think the most important thing is, if you have got any questions, never just don't ask. We're so easy to contact these days, people who teach at music colleges, all the information's online, you can send us emails and ask us questions. And I would also say as well, get in there early. If you're 16, 17 and you're thinking, yeah, maybe this is for me, but I don't know, you know, I don't know if I'm good enough or whatever, you know, you never know. I drive all around the country, I can nip in um, and uh, see you and be like, give you a quick lesson for free um, and say, okay, right, you, we've got a lot of stuff we need to do or yeah, you're already there, you're already there, okay? So I can help out and give you an idea because it's quite hard to know how good you have to be. That's maybe the hardest thing to know, isn't it? Um, so we're all here, I'm here to help with that and so, uh, many of the other professors, I mean, let's say teachers of music colleges are, because uh, like I said, everyone wants good percussionists to come forward and take up percussion. So um, I think that's just about enough Waffle, isn't it? I don't know how long I've gone on for. Should we have a look how long I've gone on for? <gasps> Limey, okay. So 40 minutes of been waffling away. Now, here's a few little books um, that I can recommend. And um, let's just say this. You might be able to get this free online as well. And that's all I'm going to say for legal reasons. You might be able to get it free online. Okay, so really good book for snare drum technique is uh, by Will Coxon. Um, and if, you were, if you're not sure on spelling, just email me, I'll tell you, Will Coxon, uh, the All-American Drummer. Great book, all the rudiments, little studies to play, really cool thing to play. Great for getting prepared for music, uh, for auditions and music college. Uh, and on the xylophone, I said it already, the George Hamilton Green Book. But then also, uh, there's a website called IMSLP, which has um, approximately a trillion pieces of music on it. And you can download those print them off at school or whatever when you're back in there uh, and you can practice reading music um, so that's really good tint book wise I don't play that much tints um, but for auditions um, there's a you, different things you have to do but the grade 8 um, pieces are used played quite a lot in auditions or Nick Vowed timpani studies book I know is the one we use down in Wales um, but this is all online on the music college websites uh, what the requirements are, what the pieces are. So don't wait. If you're thinking, yeah, I want to do this, get in there now and have a look. Auditions every year are usually end of the autumn um, time. So get in there now, get nice and prepared if you're thinking about it. Okay, so whew, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I think I'm going to wrap it up. That's the least amount of playing I've ever done for a Zoom class, which is terrible. But um, I hope there's a few little sort of bits of information there that are helpful. And I hope um, that that might make us think, I can do this, I could get into the Royal College of Music, the Royal Academy of Music, wherever. Uh, Royal Welsh, I could get the Royal Birmingham, I could get into those places if I practice. And also, if I try my best to get to the instruments that I haven't got, necessarily talk to people. Uh, I've just lent some instruments to someone who asked, so you never know. 
um, if you don't ask, you won't get, I suppose. So, uh, have a great uh, rest of the week tuning into stuff. There's some really cool things to tune into. So, I, I hope you enjoy them. But thanks for listening to me waffling away. I suggest, if you haven't, I should have said at the beginning, maybe break out but watch in 10 minute slots because it goes on a bit. Um, but for now, I'm going to say bye. My email address, here we go, is O-E-G-U-N-N-E-L-L at hotmail.com. You can find it online anywhere on one of the websites and I'll update them in ages. Um, and if you want to ask any questions about music um, and about music college, not just music college, just about percussion, uh, just send me an email and I will answer you. And if I don't answer, send me another email. There's my little motto. Okay, so thanks very much for listening and hopefully um, I'll see you when we're all back doing gigs together and we'll get to make some real live music together. So thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.